Well, I think the average person would agree that showing kindness is a nice, decent, benevolent thing to do. But for a believer, it's the godly thing to do. And if that believer is a woman, kindness is especially important. It's a trait that's highlighted in Titus's curriculum for womanhood. And it's a reflection of how God has treated us. Welcome back to True Woman 201, Interior Design. We hope that you're enjoying this study and that you're keeping up with doing the lessons. And we pray that the Lord is using these lessons to challenge and change you from the inside out. I know that I've been challenged as I've considered how to become a woman who is genuinely benevolent, charitable, and kind. Mary, just a few minutes ago, as you and I were getting some makeup done in preparation for this video shoot, we had the sweetest experience of the very element we're going to be talking about today. We did. There, uh, we have a makeup lady that we just met this morning, and her name was Maria, and she came in, and she was so kind, and she was helping us with makeup, and we were chatting with her and finding out about her family. And as we were getting ready to finish up, we said, we want to bless you. We'd like to pray for you. And you said to her, uh, is there any specific way we can pray for you? And, and she mentioned that she had not been feeling well and she had been in the hospital and was had so many health struggles. And, and so you proceeded to pray for her, just mm -hmm. prayed a beautiful prayer asking God to minister health and grace to her. Mm -hmm. And when you finished praying, she just, I, I couldn't believe her reaction. She just burst into tears and she started hugging us and just saying, this is the kindest thing anyone has ever done for me. She said, yes, this is such a gift. This is such a gift. And actually, after you left the room, I was still there. And she said, please tell Mary that I had a headache until she prayed for me mm. and my headache is gone. Oh. She was so encouraged by what just seemed like a very simple everyday act of kindness. And I thought, what a beautiful picture that mm. is of the power of kindness extended in the name of Christ. You could tell that it was just so touching. Nobody does this for me. And I just, it, to me, it was flabbergasting because it was like, everybody prays for me all the time. Right. And and just to ha to ha be praying for someone who, who doesn't receive that and is who, so touched by it. And just a reminder just... of the, the impact that we can have as women of God, mm. as we're in this cold and unkind world, to reach out and extend kindness in the name of Christ to people. Mm -hmm. And that's what we come to today as the next element of biblical womanhood. And it's right in this text, yep. older women, and he says they are to be reverent in behavior. They are not to be slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good. They are to train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, to be pure, to be working at home. And then just this four letter word, little word, kind to be kind, mm -hmm. to be kind. And yet such a powerful impact it can have when we are kind. And as we've been studying this, I think one of the things that has really stood out to me is that Christian kindness is a reflection of the kindness of God. The kindness of God. God is kind. God is kind in everything that he does. That's an overwhelming thought, the kindness of God. I, 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 we think of God as being so... Uh, all knowing, um, all powerful, you know, everywhere, sovereign. Yes. But just the whole thought that he is the kindest being when in he's the whole so big, universe. He really could just squash us. Exactly. Like but, the, ants. but there's kindness in his heart. Yes. And I just think our, our world just so yearns. We saw it in Maria this morning, uh, yearns for a touch of kindness or an act of kindness. And there's the practice the random act of kindness, even movement, because kindness is so rare and so unusual that when someone is kind, instead of being curt or snappy, it really does make a difference and people do notice. I found myself, as I've been, again, working on this book and this chapter in particular, I think the two that have been most convicting for me, the two elements have been self-control mm -hmm. and kindness. Because as I'm in the process of working with our team, with people that I'm close to, I find myself saying, Lord, would you make me more kind like mm. you are kind in my thoughts, kind in my words to notice the people around me, not just to, I tend to be very task oriented, mm -hmm. moving quickly from one thing to the next. And I can just leave a wake of busyness and stress around me, but to stop and notice and say, how can I 
minister to you in the name of Jesus. And it's transformational. Mm -hmm. While we're in the book of Titus, when you come to chapter three, you see this stated again. Paul says, we were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. You think, wow, that's a pretty awful kind of person. And so how did God treat us? But when the kindness of God appeared, the goodness and kindness of our God mm -hmm. and Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. So you think it's easy to be kind to people who bless you, who encourage you, who strengthen you. But to think of strangers, mm -hmm. people who rub you the wrong way, people who irritate you. We were all that and worse to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet he showed us kindness. And the other thing that I love about this, this verse and the way it's structured is when the goodness and kindness of God appeared, he saved us. Well, who is the he? The he is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the kindness and goodness of God appearing in right, flesh. Right. It's like God sent his kindness. That's that, that was his, his, uh, his gift to us. and yeah. his gift of kindness and Jesus Christ coming for us and dying for our sins was God's demonstration of his kind heart. And that really is the gospel. And that's what draws people to Christ. In fact, Romans 2 tells us that the goodness and kindness of God brings us to repentance. Mm. We, we say, we don't deserve this. It leaves us awestruck when we think about it, that God should have been kind to us. When Romans says we were his enemies, mm -hmm. we were separated from God, we were aliens from God, we hated God. So it's not his rules. It's not his condemnation. It's not his tisk 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 you should do better it's his kindness that draws us to repentance and that's really powerful and i think so kindness is a drawing agent it draws people in it draws people to the source of it there are lots of opportunities we have to show kindness or lack of kindness mm -hmm. and there's a whole lot more of the other side of that in large supply in this world yes. but it has to do with the way we talk to others the way we treat them We've been discussing recently about how much unkindness there is on the internet, mm -hmm. on social media. And I don't know what it is that we feel, even Christians, like we get a pass if it's something on Facebook because or it's we're not on Twitter. face to face. We're not having to deal with the person eye to eye. And I think that's an important thing to say when we're posting something or we're, you know, putting out a tweet there or something to say, if this person were, you know, if we were sitting across the table from each other, this nameless, faceless, this person I don't know, I'm just in the, in cyberspace, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would you I know, say saying the same ugly thing. things? Would I say the same thing? Yeah. Or those customer service agents. Custom By the time you get up, they, you can tell that people have been harsh to them all day. I gotta day. tell you, and this is being really personal, but I had one time an issue with an airline and they had botched my ticket, my flight royally. I was so frustrated. And of course, you, to get a live person is a big challenge. So I was high frustration level by the time I got a real person. And the impatience and the, mm. like, I've had enough of this was coming out in my spirit and my tone. It wasn't actually the words I was saying, but it's just how I was communicating. And I'm talking to this nameless, faceless person and who knows what part of the world who's, uh, you know, their customer service agent. Yeah. And all of a sudden she says to me, now, what did you say your name is? And I said, <laughs> it's Nancy Lee Moss. And she said, oh, I love your radio program. I listen to it here in this city. And I'm going, all of a sudden, I was, you turned into a very I kind woman. To a kind <laughs> woman. Well, the fact is, in that moment, I really wasn't mm. a kind woman. And in my heart, for sure. And I don't yeah. know exactly what she picked up. But when I stopped to think about what was at stake, then it turned to kindness. I see it uh, when I actually go somewhere with my husband. And uh, Brent is so cognizant of acknowledging the people in front of him. And if we go through a teller, through a checkout... He'll ask the, the, the young girl, he'll go, so how is your day going today? Or you know, the, the uh, yeah. parking lot attendant, so how is your day going today? How, how are you doing today? And it's, it's, it's fascinating to me how often that is just a door. The kindness, just that small kindness is a door for ministry. Because often the person will say, well, I really haven't been having a very good day. And then it opens the opportunity to say, well, you know, may, may I just pray for you for a moment about that or to give them a word of encouragement. It just takes a 
you know, sometimes just a moment, not a lot mm -hmm. of time, but just a thoughtfulness. And when we do, we're expressing the kindness that God has shown us in Christ. He fills our hearts to the brim with his goodness and his kindness. And that's why Paul says in Ephesians 4, for example, be kind to one another, mm. tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So it's really just the outflow and the overflow mm -hmm. of an awareness that God has been incredibly kind to me through mm -hmm. Christ. In True Woman 201, in the lessons, we talk about the fact that kindness is part of this cluster of attributes that go together. They go with one another. And I think we see that here in this Ephesians verse that be kind to one another, tenderhearted. So in order to be kind, you need a tender heart and you need a forgiving heart and you need a patient heart. So all of those things that that cluster goes with uh, the, the attributes go with one another and all of them reflect what we've received from the Lord. And it ties in to the Titus 2 passage we've been looking at, because you remember what we talked about in the last session, working at home, we talked about the priority of family, the priority mm -hmm. of home, and then the next, very next element is kind, yes. kindness. And that says to me that, you know, it's in our homes. And that's the hardest place. The hardest place in the place to be where kind. we, you know, I'm kinder many times to strangers, total mm -hmm. strangers, than I am to the people that I'm closest to. And when we're squeezed by those who are closest to us, what's and really in, in our squeezed hearts. Squeezed in a negative way. Squeezed in a negative <laughs> way, right. <laughs> what's really in our hearts is what comes out. Comes out, yes. And, and during times of stress, yes. when we are tired uh, and, and just feel that we are beyond our limits, it just, it does come out. And the sad thing is that many of us live like that all the time. I know sometimes I catch myself and I thought, I, I have not been kind. And I am, a, I am not the type of person that I would like to live with at this moment in time. You know, it reminds me a little bit of that passage, the two sisters in Luke 10. Yes. Where, you know, Mar Martha was working at home, mm -hmm. which is commendable, but in the process, she lost a kind heart. Yeah. She became irritable and impatient and demanding. And you know what? So what if we have this amazing dinner ready, mm. but in the process, or so what if we keep this amazingly clean house or it's beautifully decorated, but the people who are closest to us are receiving the barbs of our impatience, our mm -hmm. irritability, our lack of kindness. So what? I believe actually that mama often sets the tone in a yeah, home. I, yeah. There's that saying that if mama ain't happy, ain't no one happy. And I think there is some truth to that. If there's there's just the, the kindness is the first thing that's received and, and kindness is received when, when, when there are mistakes made, when there's milk spilled, uh, when the husband is perhaps a little bit snappy and irritable, if he receives kindness- It that, diffuses. It diffuses so many negative so things. Many negative things. And, the speech, our words, you know, if we have a kind heart, what's going to come out are kind words. And I think about that verse in Proverbs 31, again, another convicting verse, verse 25, it says, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Mm. Kindness, how much more effective would our teaching and our exhortation and our ministry to others be if it was you know, just a spoonful of sugar <laughs> makes the medicine go down. Uh, if it were accompanied by kindness, I think it just creates an atmosphere where people want to receive and respond to our words. It also creates an atmosphere where you're able to speak truth. Because if yes. you speak truth, uh, if you have a kind spirit, you can speak truth. And I've seen this in my marriage where I have been able to address issues that are sometimes very difficult issues or sensitive issues. I've been able to address them with kindness. And that makes all the difference in the way that you're able to address conflict, address issues in the home, address uh, thorny questions that, that perhaps there are two different opinions. But if there's kindness it makes such a difference. And as a result, we heard earlier in this series, we heard your husband say when he was put on the spot on the day of your anniversary, mm -hmm. we said, what's it like being married to Mary Cassian? And he said, I feel like I'm so blessed to be married to this amazing woman mm -hmm. after 32 years. Mm -hmm. Now, that's because Christ is amazing. You, yeah, I mean, you would be quick to say that none of us, are, we would, left to ourselves, we'd all be 
really unkind. I think it's important also to mention that kindness is a journey. I know it has been for me, and in the passage here, it says teach the younger women to be kind. And so kindness is a learning curve. It's a learning curve, and I... I believe that the Lord has worked in my heart and that I'm kinder now than I was when I was in my 20s and 30s. And and the Lord has just done that, a process of redemption in my heart as I've gotten older. Well, I'm watching the same thing happen in my heart, but I'll tell you what, it's a daily journey. Mm. It's a daily needing to be filled with the Spirit, confessing and repenting of a lack of kindness. And it's interesting that this theme of kindness is something that runs through the book of Titus. Uh, Here's another convicting verse. Titus chapter 3 says, Remind them to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle or kind, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Perfect courtesy. Toward all people. Can you imagine if we did that as believers, if as Christian women, if every woman listening to this program, uh, watching this video, showed perfect courtesy to all people. And scripture gives us several categories of people that we need to really make sure we're extending kindness to. Mm -hmm. First is to our family. And we see that in the Proverbs 31 woman. That's always the hardest place. But then also to the family of God. Scripture talks about showing kindness to those who are in the family of God. And we need to be mindful of each other, courteous Mm -hmm. to each other, conscious of the needs of those around us, whether they're like us or different. I think sometimes uh, when there is unkindness and it comes from a fellow believer, it stings. It hurts. Because we expect that that this is the family of God, that there will be more kindness, yeah. that, that there's an awareness that, that to treat others with that respect and perfect courtesy. Yes. And then there's another category we see in Proverbs 31, for example, where I think women in particular can extend kindness, and that is to the poor and needy. Mm. It says this woman opens her hand to the poor. She reaches out her hands to the needy. Mm. we're so blessed and to be conscious of the needs of those around us and saying, how can I minister to that need? How can I reach out and help lift that person up as God has lifted me up and extended his kindness to me? Mm. And then I think there's one more category, which is maybe the hardest. Family's hard, but here's another one. Jesus talked about being kind to our enemies. Our enemies. Mm -hmm. Those who are not kind to us. Who do not deserve it. And that takes us back again to how God has been kind to us. Yes. We don't deserve it. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's the Father has this kind, benevolent spirit, charitable spirit to to watch out for the poor and for the needy. And we're told that God has an incredibly tender heart for the the orphans and for the widows and for people in need, for, for, for the poor. And for sinners. And for sinners. So our kindness to others is not based on how they treat us or whether they deserve it. We extend kindness to others because Christ has poured kindness into us. And in the process, it's amazing to me to watch the transforming power of even just a little bit of kindness. Mm -hmm. We saw it this morning with Maria and how it can make such a difference. She just kept saying to us, this will, this is the most amazing gift I've ever been given. I will remember this day and I will remember you for the rest of my life. She said, (laughs) so what what did we even do? Yes. What did we do? Oh, Mary, this is such a powerful principle. It's one I feel I need so much more of in my own life. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to close our program. I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for our listeners Mm -hmm. and ask the Lord that as women of God, we would be true women who demonstrate the goodness and the kindness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being kind. Mm -hmm. You are kind above all. You define what kindness is. You are kind to the unkind. And when we're, even though we were sinners and even though we did everything possible to alienate ourselves from you, you still reached out in kindness. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you sent your son, Jesus Christ, the kindness of God appeared and he saved us. Mm. So, Father, I pray that we may become women who have kind hearts. Mm. I pray for my sister Nancy here. I pray for myself. I pray for every woman who is listening or watching. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will just stir up in us to treat people with the kindness 
with which we've been treated. Yes. The kindness that we have received from you, undeserved, and often not even undeserved, but uh, we actively were your enemies, mm -hmm. and yet you were kind to us. Mm -hmm. I pray that we may demonstrate that sort of kindness to the people we come across every day, in traffic, at the bank, in the grocery store, at the shopping mall, at the office. At home. At home. <laughs> at home. Yes. Father, may we be women who are kind. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you.